Welcome to Dilemmas with Jess Ellis and today I'm really excited because it's one of my besties. <laughs> um, I've got Malia. Well if you roll the R at the end, go on, try Mal- Mailer. Mailer. Perfect. Mailer Rhys Will- Will- Williams. Ah, there we go, he's introduced himself. But we just call you May, don't we? Yeah. Because we're lazy in English and we can't, <laughs> we can't be asked pronouncing it. Can you give us a little bit of info about yourself? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm from a village outside of Bala in North Wales. I'm an actor. I'm currently on a Welsh long-term drama series called Round and Round. Well, Round and Round. Which, trans- which translated means... Round and Round. But, yeah, but I mean, it was a, it originally... This is I think this is so <laughs> jokes. Originally, it was called that because it was about someone's paper round. Yeah, so it was... A- <laughs> So it was like the, the 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 initial like concept was similar to Biker Grove or Grange Hill. So it was aimed at school school pupils yeah. kind of age. And then over the years, it's in its twenty second series now. Oh my god! It's, 20, it's been going on for twenty two so years. Same, that's about the same time as Hollyoaks. Yeah, 22. that's it. Yeah. yeah, and it's just you know the the audience has just grown and grown and grown. So because you've got Public Home, haven't you? Which Public Home, yeah, and then. So that it's like EastEnders and Coronation Street kind of, isn't it? Yeah, so Pablo Combe is the southern soap, which is set in, well, in southwest Wales. And then Ronda Round is set in Menai Bridge in Porthaethwy in North Wales. And what else do you... I mean, I text you every weekend what you're doing and you're always singing in a choir. Yeah, well... You're, you love it. I, I mean, I'm a stereotype. I'm a walking stereotype. You're from a musical family though, aren't you? Yeah. Um. So I'm... Also in a choir called Ererod Meirion. We're a male folk choir and uh, we're available for bookings. <laughs> <laughs> but also I must tell everyone that obviously English is not your first language. No, so if I stumble or if I'm pausing to search for a word it's because I, on, on a day-to-day basis, I don't speak English. Yeah, which is so mad thinking about, like, I remember <laughs> Michael just couldn't get his head around it. Like, we'd go to, like, little pubs or whatever or villages and obviously we know all your friends and the, and everyone just speaks Welsh and he was like I've never noticed this before I know but this is what baffles me and, that people uh, yeah. that I meet within the UK are still baffled and surprised to hear that people speak Welsh every day yeah because I'll, re- I'll like when you come round you'll yeah. say if we've not seen you for a couple of months you'll be like I've not spoken English for a couple of months and I'm like oh shit yeah like yeah or if you post something on Facebook or whatever I have to use like C translation <laughs> And is it good? Does it make sense when you click translate? Think, well, you've tried to explain this to me, haven't you? That that your language is more like poetic. So in some ways, because I came to listen to Alice sing a song, because your brother's in a, a Welsh band, isn't he? So he's in a couple. He's in one called Candelas, which is the one he's the front man up for. He also plays for Alice Williams, the singer who's on The Voice. Yes. Who now tours as well. And so... Because when she was singing, I remember you were saying, it's hard to translate to you because it won't sound as not like... Yeah, it's like little translation doesn't work with lyrics and stuff because they've been written poetically in a way, haven't they? Yeah. So, you know, little tra- literal translations don't always work. Similar with a poem, like if you were to literally translate it. Oh, okay. I must say that me and May, we met because we lived in the same house. We weren't in the same... I was there for seven months seven I, month i don't know how you did May, that i know you you and there's Matt, no you and train Luke station there <laughs> like, i couldn't even drive <laughs> I, I loved it i cried when i left oh but, gosh. yeah so we basically lived in the same house yeah but there was only a crossover period of like two weeks yeah hilaire though when you left I stood in the window, sobbing, waving. I remember seeing you in your pyjamas in the upstairs window after I closed the door behind me, just sobbing with your bed head. And I was like, I'm out of here. Oh my God. Thinking I would never see you again as well. What about the first story? You can tell that story about when we first met. (laughs) Really? Yeah, you can, you can. Okay, so the first time I met Jess, the first day that you came into the house, I'd been living there for a couple of weeks, a couple of months. Yeah, big up Amphora Palace. That's what it was called. Amphora Palace in Keswick. (laughs) And then you arrived and then I was like, oh, hello, you know, a bit nervous meeting (laughs) the new housemate and like showed you around the house and stuff. And then later on that evening, I said goodbye to you on the car, (laughs) on the landing. (laughs) And then off you and I was like, okay, good night, good night. And all I heard was... (laughs) <laughs> I thought I'm gonna like this girl. I think we're gonna get along fine. <laughs> so you've listened to this podcast. I uh, let's quick disclaimer. I will fight anybody who thinks they're a bigger fan than I am. <laughs> 
Um, Thank you. You're spreading the word in Wales, aren't you? That that yeah. we're looking at our percentages and we're seeing Wales getting up. Yeah, it's representing the King of Wales <laughs> is uh, uh, repping for us. Yeah, I am the epitome of everything that you love. I'm a gay man. <laughs> And I'm from Wales. Exactly. That that is my perfect match. Like a gay man from Wales. What Wales more could need. I want? Yeah. So you will know if you listen that obviously at the start of our podcast oh, we gosh. play a little game. Oh, Ooh, honestly, does that noise fill you with terror? Yeah. Even <laughs> listening to the podcast, I squirm <laughs> listening to people eat this, and I'm just like hoping that they don't get a nasty one. So. Dig deep. So I just pick one. You just pick one, and then after three, we will both put it out. You've got to chew hard. I know okay. you can do that, baby. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, two, two three. three. Oh. <laughs> Mine's really nice. Oh my God. Mine's like tutti fruity. I've, I've got oh. sprouts on oh, oh, you're dribbling some green saliva. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. oh, my God. That's really nice. Michael, mm. I've just had to have a bit of a drink for work tomorrow. <laughs> What was yours? Sprout. Uh. So what I'd like to say is that I'd like you to just take another dip again. Okay, I'm going to do it just for you, okay? Okay. No, don't look. Don't, don't look. Because <laughs> then I'm, I'm like, <laughs> no, sick. No, don't look. Don't look. Don't okay. look. <laughs> I'm nervous. Oh. Okay, Too one, hard. two, three. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you can hear this he's literally ran into my bathroom thank god my bathroom's downstairs and is, is that? mate which one did you get oh my god is it cat food oh my god don't tell me that it tastes like earth <laughs> the worst one. that is the worst one oh, that's disgusting just yeah that's cat food you've got cat food oh thank you so much oh my god i'm so glad because it um, if you listen to kieran's episode we did it three times and every time the lucky sod Got oh. um, a nice one. That was disgusting. That was just for you. <laughs> so I'm going to start with one of our dilemmas. And you might know this, but for people that don't, I've not seen this yet. So it's on a folded piece of paper. Okay. So it's fresh eyes for both of us. Fantastic. Okay. I'm ready for it. Okay. So we've got Amy, 22, from Scotland. Lovely. A- Amy, is that you? <laughs> 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 Amy, Amy, Michael knows how to say the second name. He says it better now. Go on, Michael. Connigan. Connigan. Amy Connigan. No, well, it's not Amy Connigan because she's definitely not 22. And it was a great um, episode, by the way. Oh, Just slip that in. Thanks. Okay, so Amy, I'm a younger person living in the most remote village in the most remote part of the Scottish Highlands. Ring, I, a, ring a bell? I feel you, Amy, already. <laughs> when Tinder came out, I was over the moon. Finally, the only men in my life wouldn't be my dad and Keith, who runs a local. Big up to Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Keith sounds ace. I love how you do a little chuckle after all your jokes, oh, you, by the way. Mate, that, that you're, one the, the, again, you're the one person that picks me up on this. One of the first things that Jess ever said to me was like, I am funny in a plastic bag, mate. <laughs> I'm the funniest person I know. <laughs> that used to be my Tinder line, actually. <laughs> I used to be like, I think it was in my bio. I'm, I'm the funniest, now. funniest person I know. Exactly. Hey. It worked. Um, sorry, oh, carry on, sorry. Amy. So I got lost there with Keith. Being my dad and Keith, who runs a local. But now I've run out of swipes. Girl, we've all been there when you complete oh, a Tinder. God. I remember like nearly crying once on a Sunday. Like, are you fucking... I've, got, I've completed Liverpool's Tinder. Right. So How can I do that? Is there any more? Yeah. Uh, But now I've run out of swipes. Nobody else knew around me. I've completed Scottish Highland Tinder. (laughs) Here's my dilemma. I love where I live so many uh, in so many different ways, but I also really want a relationship. Can long distance work? There's a guy I met in Glasgow when I was visiting a friend last month, and I'm not sure if it's worth texting him or not. Okay, so that that's quite. So basically, I think the dilemma is. How do you date when you're living in the countryside? I think I am the perfect person to deal with this one, Jess. Oh my God. Let me tell you a couple of my Tinder stories, first of all. When I was was on Tinder, I've given up on it now. I had to open the age bracket up to like 70. (laughs) That's not for everyone. I don't recommend everybody do that. Everybody does that. And I also opened up the um, distance bracket to the maximum. Now, obviously, being gay and from (sighs) North Wales, there aren't that many of us there. It's not like you're in Cardiff. No, I was picking up guys from Ireland. You weren't. I promise. You weren't. Oh, my gosh, I've just matched with the most gorgeous man. He's lovely, looks nice, nice biog. And then we'd start chatting. He'd be like, 
And then I'd realise, oh, it's du- he's in Dublin. Oh, my God. So my best hope of even going on a date was to step on a ferry. Um, so I can, first of all, relate with you, Amy, and I feel for you. But I don't know how to deal with this because... because like, I guess what she's like, that because for you, you could live in a bigger city. To, and do, yes. Like, you were living in Carnarvon. Yes. With your job. But obviously your job is based in North Wales and it's a full-time job. Yes. So you haven't really got that much of a choice. Do you know what I mean? And it's like you've lived in London, you've lived yeah. all over. Yeah. But I guess she's saying that she loves her village or whatever, but is she going to have to leave home? Or she's saying like, can she do long distance with this guy from Glasgow? Like the thing is, if you're not willing to up sticks and, tr- you know, move to the city or whatever, yeah. then you're going to, like your only option is long distance. But that's really sad though, that you have to choose because I'm so happy to be back home in North Wales. Yeah, now. you love it. Cause you're I, just about like to buy said, a house, aren't you? Yeah. So that's really difficult if, if you have to choose from loving the location or your home with like having a romantic lifestyle Mm. like that is a shame because i even if like whatever happens in the future i would love to settle in north wales but realistically if i want to have to find somebody yeah and not just find the first other gay person and also what she like obviously what you're saying is it is harder as well for you as a gay man and she's obviously a straight girl like it's yeah people are more visible that uh straight yeah, do you know what i mean absolutely so if you're still struggling if you're struggling and you're a straight girl jesus how old, how old is amy 22 so this is what i would say like home is always going to be there your hometown is always going to be there so uh, what i would say is i, th- I think this is going to be my plan is that i'm gonna have to move to a city at some point yeah to see, you know, because catch some more fish in the, sh- in the sea. Yeah, because you're like, I've been to your local pub and it's great, but it's just everyone that you know that you've got, like... Yeah. So you're not going to... I'm yes, not going to find my Yes, there might be there. some someone there on holiday. But most people that are there are probably in a couple a holiday and you're not just going to walk into your local bar. Yeah, it's not Ibiza, is it? No, you're not going to meet anyone. <laughs> like, it's great and everyone gets pissed and sings Welsh songs and me and Michael are like, oh, it's great, Isn't this. it fantastic? But you're not going to meet anyone. So I guess with, a- like, it's true what you're saying with Amy. Like, also, not just to find yourself a relationship, but I do think for when you're from a small place, like, go and see somewhere else for a and little also, bit. And also, like, just try a few dishes off the menu. Do you know or what you, I mean? Or, like, go and get a summer job. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Go absolutely. Even go to the Edinburgh Festival and work the festival for a month. Yeah, it doesn't have to be for long, does it? It can be no. for a really short time. Like you know, go get a summer job somewhere, or you know, even out of Scotland. Like do you make things work? And yeah. I just think, like you said, home is is always there. It's about creating different social circles as well, isn't it? Because yeah. like you say, when I'm home, I mix with the same people, the people that I grew up with, and. I don't really branch out of that because I've got great friends. So yeah. you're not going to meet different people. At the same time, even when I visit Cardiff and I, I go down to see my friends, or London even, I just meet up with my friends, say I'm yeah. down for a week and stuff. Because it that takes time to maintain relationships and see everybody and catch up and stuff. And then before you know it, it's time to go back home again. Yeah. So I've had no time to... We, need, we really need to get you... St- I was Mad. just going to say we really need to get you shagged, but we do. <laughs> but I mean, we need you to get you shagged and committed. I would, that would be I fantastic. would love to see you with a boyfriend, you know. That, I would love that. Oh, I I'm, would I'm putting it out little, into, into the universe. Yeah, we'll put it out into the universe. The promise, isn't it? And in answers to Amy, I would say... Well, this the secret, w- that's what it's called, isn't it? But when you put it out into the universe. Yeah. yeah, apparently. I think Amy should do that as well. Yeah, she should put it out into the universe. But also, I say, you know what? Just live a little... Text that guy from Glasgow. Why not? Why not? You Just go for a day trip. You might like him. You might end up going, oh, do you know what? I'm going to get a little bar job here or whatever on the weekend yeah just do it like you're so young home's always going to be there but fly that nest absolutely Sweetie, fly 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 don't get don't don't make me sing <laughs> <I know, yeah. laughs> and it doesn't have to be forever does it you no. can always go back home yeah do it so may are you ready for the next one i'm all set Ooh, this is an anonymous anonymous, anonymous. i love it when i always think this is gonna be juicy this so they've just called themselves call centre worker 29. Okay. That's very vague. Yeah, I used to Not, work in a call centre so as well. Me, haven't we all actors, yes. darling? Haven't we all? <laughs> Absolutely. I worked at horrible... I cried what, at one that was in the stage. I worked in London and I was like asking really old people to do direct debits for charity. And oh, no. this guy was like, what? And I just cried and left. I couldn't <laughs> do it. Um, anyway. Grim. I digress. I hate my boss. 
and I've got a piece of information that would definitely get him fired. Ooh, wow. Wowza. Very simply, do I do it because he's an absolute arsehole or will the universe and karma frown on me? Ew, gosh, that's a good oh one. God, do you know what? Like, I don't... Oh, Michael's got his opinion straight away. Get the prick fired. <laughs> um, so there we go. Dan that's Levin, it. Dan Thank Levin, you very much. Thank you very good. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Do you know what? Like, I don't, I'm not religious. I'm not spiritual. I don't really believe in stuff. But I do kind of believe in karma. Yeah, same. And sometimes if ever, like, I've never done anything like that. But if if I've gone to think of, like, I really do think about my actions. And maybe this is quite selfish, actually. Like, sometimes I, I stop doing something because I think, well, I don't want any, if I do this, will something bad happen to me? I'm of the same uh, way of thinking as you. I l- try, as in I don't always succeed, try to move, like decide to do the most positive thing yeah. with the least repercussions then. Oh God, this is a, it's, this is it's, a tricky This one. is really hard because you don't know what this piece of information is. Like if this piece of information is that he's, I don't know, fucking over the company or he's doing something really bad, then morally surely you should say something yeah absolutely and but and then it, it's just a bonus then that you get a little but then do you know it. what like i just got a little pang then of just thinking like as much as someone's an arsehole then you go shit but like that's their job that's their livelihood like have they got kids will, will they be able to find the money will this put them in a really bad situation but then i think but then has this person's actions have led them to this? It's really hard, isn't it? Yeah. I don't think I'd do it. I don't think I'd be able to either. Do you not um, think you... Would you? Like you say, it depends on the situation and what this person's I think done. in my mind, I'd be like, I'm going to fucking do that. I can't wait to do that. And then the more that my little mind was churning over at night, thinking about, is he going to be able to feed his kids? I couldn't do it. Yeah, you have to live with that then. And what if it got back to him who did yeah. that? Yeah. I... No, I wouldn't be able to do it. Mm, I uh, say that. I know, it's so hard. Ooh, it depends how horrible this boss, because I've had a few horrible bosses. Not my current bosses, they're wonderful. But um, in the past, would I have said something? Like you say, though, it depends how dark this... And- yeah, but I often think to myself as well, it's kind of like the karma thing. I often think if someone's doing something really bad, it it might take a month, it might take 10 years, but eventually, most of the time, it comes out absolutely it comes out and people get their comeuppance like fucking hell that happens so much in the acting industry you're yeah, like definitely. why is that but that person is awful they're so well they're so badly behaved like why have they got that job why have they done that it's so unfair it's so unfair but then you do see it and then you're like oh okay yeah it's, that saying is true though isn't it be kind to people on your way up because you'll see them on your way down yeah no exactly so with this guy <sighs> mm, the fact is, is can you, like, I'm a bit of a worrier sometimes about yeah. things. Can you switch that off? Can you just give that piece of information? Or will this wake you up at three o'clock in the morning thinking, oh God, I've lost someone their job? It would cause me, it would cripple me with anxiety. Yeah, me too. Just thinking like, oh, has he been told? But like, that's going to happen? I think there's a lot of people that it wouldn't. And I think a lot of people would be able to switch off. Like, I'd like have him killing himself. I'd be <laughs> ending up there. I'd be like sitting up and playing a little movie in my head. And probably they would just go and get another job anyway. Like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, so uh, I would say if this information, because this is hard, isn't it? Because we don't have the information of what yeah. this... But I really want to know. I know, me too. <laughs> so I'm, Mr. I'm, Anonymous, if you'd like to DM I'm abso- us. Yeah, please DM me. I promise I won't tell anyone. Yeah, so if this secret, if this bit of information is about the company and work, yeah. then I would say go, like, tell them, go for it. This is about, this is affecting the, the work, the, the job, like... The office I guess I guess that's part of your job is your responsibility to report someone for doing not doing their job properly. But th- if this is about something in their personal life, for me, I don't want to go anywhere near that. No, and if you can go about your day in the office without being affected and you're just doing it for, like I say, a personal vendetta, that's a key. Yeah, no, and also it just won't make you feel very nice. No. It, regardless of, of that, of if you can handle it or not, I just think in the end there will be that time when you sat there and you're like, oh shit, like... I did that to that I person. I did that and it was in their personal life. And, you know, their personal life, just like your personal life, has nothing to fucking do with anyone else. Also, like... If you've heard this piece of information, is it 100% true? Like, Yeah, and that's not really your business to be meddling in. Yeah, like, uh, it's like someone being like, oh, yeah, 
you do like you doing a really really good job every day but then someone going oh yeah but she gets really pissed at the weekend i saw her and falling out of this club or whatever that's it's like fair. it's not your business no, like whatever people do in their spare time like. and also you're setting a very high bar for yourself then as well yeah exactly you you must what's that what's that jesus thing what is from, it? from when i was a kid <laughs> I, I went to catholic school can you tell something like you the person that can throw the first stone at someone is the first person to throw the, the stone isn't it isn't it something like that yeah it, it, it's basically either what you way say. yeah fucking else don't throw the stone <laughs> Right, this is from our Instagram. Oh, fun. And remember, if you want to slide into my DMs at Dilemmas Jess, please send me your dilemmas because eventually we will read them out. We just had a message actually from someone saying, it was an anonymous one that from Kieran's and we made um, her name Betty and she said, Thank, you read my dilemma out, love Betty. Oh, I love um, Betty. So yeah, Betty. So I'm going to read this one as anonymous only because it doesn't say. So I would say, if you are going to send us your dilemmas, please can you tell us your name, your age, where you're from, and tell us if you want it to be anonymous because I don't want to be reading out something and getting people into trouble. But also, if you want your, you know, if you're not bothered and it's just a dilemma you want helping with, we'd love to read out your name, where you're from, like you're on blind date, okay? So here we go, are you ready? I'm ready. Well, it started with, it's a bit of a long dilemma. Oh, I like it. I well, like it's a good it. job I like the sound of my own voice then. <laughs> um... <laughs> A little chuckle. Yeah, laughing at my own joke there. Yeah, First time I've heard it. I um, <laughs> she's on a roll. I fancied a guy years ago while I was at uni, and we used to sleep with each other on and off. And then didn't I, we all? yeah, didn't we almost have it all? Uh, I can't believe I just went into Whitney. <laughs> um, but each other on and off, and then we went to a different uni, and we stopped talking. Four years later, we get chatting properly, but he was in America doing Camp America. Right. We spoke every day for months and discussed the future when he got home. He got home and we've been seeing each other since October. Cute! And I really, really like him. My problem is he's going back to America in May to do camp again. Do I continue to pursue it or not? We got through it once before, before we even saw each other. Will we be able to get through it again till October? Help. Okay, so this is basically like the first one, the girl from Scotland, but yeah. there's an end date on this. So let me just work out what this is. So when is he going? Next year, next May, didn't she say? Yeah? We spoke before and then he's come home. Uh, we've seen each other since October. I really like him. Okay, so he's going back to America in May and then he comes back in October. So how long's that? I'm, I'm so thick. May, a, five months. That's quite long. That's nearly half a year, isn't it? Yeah. This is, do you know what? To make it relatable to us, this is like actors going on tour. Yes, this is very true. Dangerous territory because you're mixing with other people for an intense amount, like intense situ- um, uh, sur- surroundings. Yeah, because you kind of you with any kind of thing like Camp America or like like you say tours and stuff. It's these group of people, and you actually Thrown get together. you get caught in this bubble, and you're like, no one's ever le- no one's ever had this experience, and you get very. Like I've, you know, when I was in Keswick for seven months, I remember. <laughs> I still can't believe you uh, did seven that. Seven months. I remember crying my eyes out when I, because I, this, these fourteen people had become my life. And also, real life doesn't exist when you're no, in that bubble. It doesn't exist. And like the relationships outside of that bubble start to fade away. Like you know, you're living in a little make believe world. The information that she's given us is that obviously, what I think is good about it is they've like used to shag on and off. Then they didn't see each other for four years and then they've rekindled it. So they've had their bits and bobs and, and whatever. And then also, like, if she was just... She'd not seen him for four years and she was just speaking to him on the phone. Yeah. And they weren't even together. Yeah. And then he's come back. He's, like, he's going to make it work this time, no? Hopefully. But like you say, but they've had these breaks, though. So what's going to stop them having another break when he goes but, away to America for five months? But I do, I do think it's a long time, but I just think to myself, like, this is the way that I look at situations. I think if you really, really like each other or love each other or whatever, yeah, th- that's five, you know, that's five, if you're looking at it like we're going to be together forever, that's five months out of everything. And you don't want to, you don't want to stop people having an experience in their life. No, and you I don't think want them to important. look back and go, you know, like if I, with me and Michael, you know, my job, it's, it, our jobs are so weird that they can take us anywhere. I could end up being going to America for five months. So yeah. if he stopped me doing that, like, 
that would be horrific. I'd resent him for it. You're right. The proof is in the pudding there, isn't it? Because I think it's one of those things where if you try and stop somebody from doing what they want, then they're going to resent you for doing that. Yeah. And then, whereas if you let them go and go, hey, I love you. I know we can get through this. They're going to... Oh, well, it's oh who says door. someone's at the door? It is Daisy Wood Davis and Luke Jurdy. Oh, my gosh. Hello. Uh, Peter Pan has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still jealous that I was the lead, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, like so, I was saying... Yeah. If you stop somebody from doing what they want, then they're gonna resent you for doing that. If you're gonna if you let him go to Camp America, yeah. then guys, FIFA can weigh. <laughs> this poor person is losing her boyfriend to Camp I know, America. Yeah. Um <laughs> whereas if you let them go, then if your relationship is meant to last, then it will. And at the same time, if your partner then finds somebody else at Camp America, then they don't deserve your time. But exactly. I was just gonna say this. You know, the the thing of people going away and stuff, I think to myself. I trust, if Michael had to go somewhere for five months, my first thought wouldn't be like, oh, he's going to meet someone else. Like, If he was going to meet someone else, else, he could meet someone next week or yeah, down and, the road or yeah, at work. Yeah, Tesco's or whatever. Like, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Absolutely. Like, that person obviously wasn't for you. But if not, like, just because they're going to a different country doesn't mean necessarily that... Yeah, and also, listen, we've got FaceTime nowadays. Yeah. It is, I yeah, think FaceTime but, has say, probably saved a lot of relationships. But at the same time, it is worth thinking, like, okay, this is going to be five months. Yeah. So, But in that five months, is there any opportunity that... Can you visit people when they're in Camp America? Yeah, you get some time off. Yeah, so either like, end, can I you think. not, like, split that five months up? Like... Probably. Go in the middle. I just think, if you've made it work the first time and you weren't even seeing each other and you chatted all the time, yeah. you're there... But that's going to be even more, no? No, absolutely. But I think it is a good idea to sit down, just voice your worries. Yes, that's so true. Just be like, I'm really supportive of what you're doing. I'm not saying this so you don't go, but I'm just I'm just going to miss you as well, isn't yeah. it? There'll be times when you miss each other. There's a time difference. There'll be times when people are tired or they'll be like, oh, yeah, I had so much fun with this these people today and you're going to feel really left out. Yeah, absolutely. But try and rise above that and just go for it. If you really like this person, five. what the fuck is five months? Absolutely stay with him. Yes, I agree. May, thank you so much for being... Do you know what? I think you're great with advice, though. Thank if, you. If I, was, if I was in a dilemma of my own, I think I'd definitely speak to you. Yeah, I think we've spoken at length about your dilemmas. Yeah, de- <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Over the years. Yeah. But I, thank you for having me, by the way. No, thank I you. I love this podcast. Guys, I've written my review. I have subscribed, so get on it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Oh, I love this. My guests are like picking up on this. They're yeah. like, Kieran was like, can I say it? Like subscribe, rate and review. <laughs> I was like, yeah, please say it. I'm Get fucking it. sick of saying it. <laughs> <laughs> if you want this podcast to continue, then you need to, you know, commit. Yeah, exactly. And it's nice to branch out and hopefully we'll get some Welsh speaking people listening to it. Absolutely. And then people, get my troops and people can watch round and round. You can watch it with the subtitles on if yeah, you're it's English. On, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays at half six. So you can catch on BBC iPlayer. iPlayer. Um, okay, so I know that you cruelly, you did get a really horrible one. You started retching in the bathroom. But to yes. end our podcast. Just for you again. This will happen again. But listen, yeah. I'm telling you now, you have to close your eyes, right? Okay. Because last time I've seen, well, actually, it didn't work for you. No. But you were trying to look on the colours. Listen, the yeah, colours are Because some gonna... of them look like vomit and yeah, like exactly. earth and. So close your eyes. Snot. Put your hand in a bowl. Uh, uh, you've probably done this before. Close your eyes. Put your hand in a heart. A <laughs> <laughs> you love it in Berlin. Oh <laughs> my God. Hey, I thought I sent that dilemma in anonymous. <laughs> um, and chew it hard again. You okay. Get that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Go. A really nice one Oh again. no, what is it? What's it taste like? Mm, like watermelon. Oh, you fucker. Well, at least you got one. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being a brilliant guest. Thank and you for having Auntie me. Auntie May May, as we like to call you of the dogs. Auntie May, thank you very much. Thank you. You've been listening to Dilemmas with Jess Ellis, and we hope you've enjoyed this podcast. If you have, you'll make Bob the dog very happy if you could click subscribe, give Dilemmas a rating, and also leave a review on Apple Podcasts too. And of course, if you've got a dilemma, then get in touch via the Dilemmas socials at Dilemmas Jess on Instagram and Twitter. Finally, don't forget, nobody's got their shit together and you're doing just fine. Thanks for listening.